Tonight, questions emerge about when and what the president knew about executive emolument adjustments. Pressure mounts on government for full disclosure. For coming out with all these figures, and I wish the whole report we make public so that people realize the rational basis for making these recommendations. We also wish that the government will say we accept this, we don't accept this. But we sent this report in March 2011. We will hear from Professor Irama Adi, who chairs the Presidential Committee on Emoluments. This is Top Story with Evans Mensah. Top Story is brought to you by Bond Financial Services, your successor passion, Belakra Mineral Water, the new generation mineral water, as well as myjoyonline.com. Tonight we are live on the multi TV studios from the multi TV studios here, also live on Joy 99.7 FM. Now, full disclosure and transparency words that have become the central elements in an acrimonious public debate about salary increases for the executive arm of government. Now, President John Mahama has directed the withholding of any payment of the new salaries while he has requested Parliament to review the salaries to align with the Professor Irama Adi Committee proposals. Government has refused to comment on the matter beyond issuing a public statement. But now there are questions being asked. When did the president know about the increases? Was there a white paper on the recommendations? And what were the recommendations exactly? While the controversy rages on, there are growing calls for government to do full disclosure on the matter. The chairman of the committee itself, Professor Adi, a month ago pushed for full disclosure and transparency when she spoke exclusively to join you. Take a listen. I wish, I wish the, the presidency or the government will make public the whole report, you know, because um, singling out uh, one particular unit or, so, or part, one particular office holder makes it a little difficult. There's a reason for coming out with all these figures. And I wish, as I said, I wish the, the whole report we make public so that people realize, people get to know the rational basis for making these recommendations. Mm -hmm. We also wish that the government will say, we accept this, we don't accept this. But we sent this report in March 2011. And we were hoping that it will, you know, it will be made public or it will be a white paper will come of it in, because these are recommendations. But none of that happened. And, and so I, you know, um, as I, again, to me, the most important thing is to tell the whole report or the rationale, how we arrived at the formula that we used to give everybody what, what we thought they deserved. Uh, you heard Professor Irama Adi, who chairs the Presidential Committee on Emoluments. Something uh, is joining me in the studio. He is my uh, editor, indeed, for this particular show, but has been studying that document produced by Professor Irama Adi. And I'm sure you know by now that, uh, so far as government is concerned, they will not speak on this matter. But we will do some disclosure. Uh, of our own, and Samson is joining me because he's been studying the document. Thank you very much, Samson, uh, for your time here on Top Story. Uh, was there any semblance of transparency in the process leading to the recommendations by the Ramanadi Committee? Right, Evans. I'm holding in my hand the executive summary uh, of the pro of the pro of the proposals, and also I've got what the committee calls the approach and comparative analysis that they did in the whole process. In fact, you would find that there was some uh, semblance, indeed, of uh, uh, of, uh, of, of some transparency because the committee did not limit the work to themselves alone. They consulted almost every individual and in every office that was concerned. And more importantly, they also consulted the ministries, departments, agencies, and commissions. And this included the Ministry of Finance, the Controller and Accountant General. Uh, they extended it to civil society organizations. They had the CDD. They had the IEA, for example. So on that score, you would say that they they did uh, some uh, extensive consultation in arriving at the recommendations now, that they what had. were the prior recommendations of the committee mm. and what has changed now because that's where the questions really are 
All right. Now, you would find in reading through the very voluminous documents that when they went through the consultation process, for example, for the presidency, it was, uh, there was some groundswell of opinion that the president should earn 15,000 Ghana cities uh, per month. However, the Iramade committee uh, decided that the president was deserving of 12,000. So on that score, they cut it down. Now, for that is the, the committee? Yes, the committee. Uh, so and, and it is the same thing that Parliament upheld. So that has not changed. When it comes to the Vice President, however, um, the committee actually had certain points of weightage that it gave to be able to determine the salaries. The President had 100 uh, 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 percentage points. And then you come to the Vice President. The, pre the Vice President has 75 per percent. Mm. And then you move down to Chief Justice. You go down to uh, Cabinet Ministers who are also MPs. Mm. And then uh, Cabinet Ministers who are not MPs. And the salary scale uh, cuts across. Now, uh, in respect of the Vice President, he was supposed by the committee, he was recommended to be paid 9,000 Ghana cities. But you find that uh, Parliament has adjusted that, the Ramadi committee, mm. and giving the Vice President 10,500. So Parliament increased exactly. the original recommendation. Parliament varied it. And also, the other place you find that Parliament may have varied, and I use the word may because we do not know exactly how much Parliament has uh, recommended or approved for the ministers and um, the deputy ministers and so on. Because on, on the list, uh, the, the cabinet ministers who have a weightage of uh, 70 uh, points, who are also MPs, are supposed to be paid 8,400 Ghana cities. And those who are cabinet ministers but are not MPs are supposed to take home 7,800 Ghana cities. But we are told that some of the ministers are taking up to 9,000. Mm. In that, in that area, you would then find that Parliament may have again varied the recommendation of the Eramadi uh, committee. But I must state that uh, those who had 65, uh, 65 points uh, include Shraj, the Electoral Commission, mm. uh, the Common Fund Administrator, you have the Public Services Commission, you have the National Council for Civic Education, the Deputy Speakers of Parliament, you have the Auditor General, you have the Appeal Court Judges, Regional Ministers who are also MPs, and their salary stands at 7,800. You will find that from what we hear, that they are earning, they are supposed to earn 8,000 mm. and more, mm. then it means that Parliament also varied the salaries that were supposed to be paid. I see, and the President has asked for a review. Mm. Uh, what will the review in, in line with the committee's report as requested by the President entail? Okay, from what I have studied so far, it appears very clear that the review will then uh, apply to the Vice President. If the review is supposed to be in line with the Iramadi committee... And if the 8,000 to 9,000 we've heard in the public domain, yeah. as far as the ministers are concerned, it will apply to them as exactly. well? Exactly. Thank exactly. you very much, Sam Singh. Uh, uh, well, the PPP presidential candidate, Dr. Parkwisi Indum, has chided President Mahama for not demonstrating enough transparency in the matter. He spoke to Joy News on the sidelines of his visit to the Kolobu Teaching Hospital. I, I don't believe John Mahama when he says that he is now coming uh, to ask Parliament to review it. Because nothing gets to Parliament, and indeed nothing should get to Parliament with the kind of constitution we have, without his knowledge. If he says he didn't know, then I'm worried. But if he knew, and he's gone there, and now that the public uh, are disagreeing, He's saying they should go and review it. I don't buy it. Okay, that sort of politics uh, we don't need in this country. Okay, we need people uh, to be forthright with us. I've been a member of parliament. I've been a minister. I know what the process is like. Joining me on the line right now is the Vice President of Policy Think Tank, Imani Ghana, Kofi Bentel. Thank you, sir, for your time here on Top Story. I'm sure you've heard the discussions today. Now, we're hearing indeed from Professor Rama Ade herself, and I'm sure you've heard the PPP's presidential candidate talk about the need for transparency and full disclosure. Where do you stand on that? Well, good evening to all your listeners. Um, the point is this. The President's posture is worrying. 
And I think that is the first thing that we need to say. The president is the first gentleman of the land. And although he will not know everything, when he sets up a committee, we don't think that the committee can come this far without him knowing what is going on. So if the president gives the impression that he didn't know and therefore he's asking for some kind of review, that is very, very worrying. Worrying if he didn't know, worrying if he knew. Because if he knew, then he's not being forthright with Ghanaians. So for me, that's the first worrying thing. The second worrying thing is that why should this be shrouded in so much secrecy? You know, I mean, generally speaking, people's salaries are not matters of public concern. But that is not true with public office holders. How, how so? How so exactly? They, they have their personal lives as well, indeed, whether they are members you know, of the executive you know, or it not. It takes a certain amount, okay, of... Uh, it, it takes something to submit yourself for public office. If I wanted to find the salary of the President of the United States today, I will know it. All right? So when it comes to certain offices of the land, it is in the interest of the country that we know. And let's not kid ourselves. We are not saying this is the only thing they take home. But when it comes to the nominal salary and a couple of things, it is proper in a country like this for that to be public knowledge. After all, after everything is said and done, we will get to know anyway. So I worry about why this is shrouded in so much secrecy, and it heightens the suspicion that some untoward deals have been done. Okay? So for me, the security surrounding this thing is, is really a worrying thing. Well, the, what, what would you say, so, so, sorry to button, what would you say to those who suggest that we should applaud the president at least He's asked for a review and indeed directed the finance minister not to authorize the payments. You know, um, that is uh, asking a bit because, you see, in a certain sense, I don't mean to use strong words, but it sounds to me like insulting the intelligence of a Ghanaian. Okay, the truth of the matter is that is the president telling us he didn't know. And that's why I'm saying that his posture is worrying. If he didn't know, that is worrying. And if he knew, it is also worrying that he comes across as if he didn't know and is now coming to us for a review. When Parliament is on recess, okay, and this thing has been you know, in the often for the most part of this year, okay, you don't come to a point like this and then you throw this kind of thing out and all of us have to be talking about this thing, which should really not be an issue. Look, if they set the salaries at a point, okay, or at a certain quantum, which is generally acceptable. I don't think anybody's going to argue about it. And arguments that have been made that he's the first gentleman of the land, which suggests that he may he should earn more than anybody in the land, is not on. So indeed, there are many different shades of concern from many aspects of Ghanaian society. But for me, the biggest problem is the secrecy surrounding this thing and the president's posture, which is suggesting that he didn't know. It quick, is very, very quick word, quick word on this, because I know it's part of the Rama Adi uh, recommendation. Actually, it's also been captured in the CRC recommendations that we should set up some permanent form of a commission that will deal with this seasonal ritual where we always are talking about the salaries of the executive or the legislature. What, what do you stand on that as well? You know, we need to do a bit of thinking on that because the position is this. We tried this before. We had Green Street. We had issues with Green Street. We have a Ramadi. We have issues with the Ramadi. I think the whole idea of scratch my back and I scratch your back will always be problematic. If you ask me right now, I'll say, look, we should have a simple formula. For instance, the president's pay should be 50 times the minimum wage. Okay, if, you, if, if we put it that way, and I'm not saying that is a perfect solution, but for me, I think we should have something that objective. So if we know the minimum wage which has been set by some other body, we just multiply it by 50 and we know the president's pay. All right? That way you don't need a commission, a setup. And in that way, so people will feel a bit of equity because if we all rise, we rise together. If we all fall, we fall together. Mm -hmm. All right? Instead of having all these commissions, which, look, I don't think, and I don't think anybody else thinks, that the Irama Adi Commission acted in total independence. I think they were guided. I think somebody suggested things to them. Okay, I see. so we shouldn't kid ourselves and go on and say, look, this is a perfect situation. Everybody just sat down, looked in the skies, did a lot of calculations, consulted people, and came up with these figures. Somebody guided him. I and see. there was consultation all over the place before they got to this point. So indeed, let us have an objective way of doing this so we don't have to come back to this thing every four years. Okay. Give the president a second multiple of And I'm sorry, I need, I need to bat here because I just ran out of time, but I'm grateful for your time here on Top Story. That's uh, the vice president of Imani Ghana, uh, Kofi Bentil, speaking to us about the controversy that is raging. And indeed, you want to stay with us on Newsnight, on Joy Night 9.7 FM, where we'll have more on this particular story for you as well.
And we've been live from the studios here at Multi TV, also live on Joy 99.7 FM. We have more news for you uh, for our TV audience at 8 p.m. And this will feature definitely, you want to make time and watch that. My name is Evans Mensa, and Top Story is brought to you by Bond Financial Services, your success, our passion. Belaka Mineral Water, the new generation mineral water, as well as my joy, online.com.